We all live in a digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Hello, everyone from Katowice. I think it is on. Hello. Yeah. The it's city in right. Poland that is uh, hosting this year's uh, IGF Digital Summit. Uh, my name is uh, Mariusz Zawudzki, and I am a professor of law at uh, Andrzej Frisz-Morzewski Krakow Academy. And, I'm a, I, and I am here because together with uh, my dear colleague, Professor Darius Szostek from the University of Silesia, uh, I have been leading a scientific project uh, whose results we are going to present during this panel. Um, this project uh, concerned uh, the future of the law of the internet and new technologies. Uh, researchers from all over the world, and actually this is truth, uh, since uh, we have worked uh, with uh, lawyers from uh, five different uh, continents, uh, we have been considering a number of issues in this area, and the results uh, have been published in a form of a book. I do have this book here with me today, uh, and I am happy that it was already distributed. Uh, and I'm also proud of it that each uh, uh, Digital Summit participant has actually received a copy of this book. But if you don't have it, don't worry, it will be soon available open access. Uh, it was a very large project, uh, lasting, uh, thanks to the pandemic, a little bit longer than we have anticipated. Uh, and this is why uh, the research results uh, probably are uh, almost uh, 500 pages long. We didn't plan it, but somehow it is. You know how it is with scientists, uh, especially uh, with legal scientists. Uh, before we will say a little bit more about the project, please see a short film that is uh, presenting our achievements. Hello. My name is Dariusz Szostek and I am a professor of the University of Silesia in Poland, in Katowice. And together with Professor Zawudzki, we are the editors from the monograph. The future of the law is uh, the best description of the project we have just done. Internet and new technologies uh, will be with us for a long time and we wanted to predict its future. So uh, scientists from all over the world uh, has prepared a research project and the conclusions of this project uh, are inserted in the book we have just uh, issued. Uh, the book uh, ends with uh, conclusions and recommendations for the internet community. So I would like to encourage you to read this book and maybe join the discussion with us about the future of the law of the internet and new technologies. International research project uh, Internet and New Technology Law, Perspectives and Challenge was special, prepared by dozens of scientists uh, from five uh, continents, Australia, South America, North America, Asia and Europe. Joint recommendation for the UN IGF on the future of the internet. Polish editors, international team, prestigious international publishing halls, Silesia and Katowice. Welcome in UNIGF 2021. The Mexican case proves that a discussion has been opened on whether or not to constitutionalize a right to digital justice. Policymakers should remember that even though such an outcome is desirable, digital justice will require extensive intervention and procedures designed to be carried digitally 
are not merely normative amendments. The United Nations should examine the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights for their content for the use of AI in the field of justice. The United Nations should develop globally applicable standards and elaborate recommendations for possible additional laws. These are intended to help ensure that AI can unfold its beneficial effect on the law while keeping the risks manageable and eliminating unacceptable risks by banning certain forms of AI or by prohibiting the use of AI in certain judicial scenarios. My name is Friedrich Zoll. I am professor of law at the Aguilon University and the University of Osnabrück in Germany. In the book Law at the Internet, I have written a chapter on the legal tech and legal services. We will face here in this area incredible changes. Uh, the profession will be challenged to reshape its way of operation, the rules of, of ethics, and also the legal education must be completely revisited and possibly reformed. I hope that this book and this chapter will help to start the necessary discussion in Poland, in my country, uh, and we are a little bit too late and it is necessary to um, launch the process of the adjustment to the future. Thank you very much and I wish you a pleasant reading of the book. The most concerning problems in the context of the use of artificial intelligence tools by financial firms may arise because of the opacity of AI models used, and especially opacity resulting from complexity of machine learning models, as well as corporate secrecy. Therefore, regulation should focus on mandating transparency of corporate practices and explainability of models used. I am Professor Doug Surtees of the College of Law, University of Saskatchewan, Canada. I recommend that the United Nations develop a rubric of internationally accepted standards of lawyer technological Okay, thank you much for this uh, presentation. And I guess now it's uh, time to say a little bit more about the project. Uh, mm, uh, we have uh, divided the title issue of the future of the law and uh, mm, of the internet and new technologies into several, uh, actually four research areas. Um, every area mm, ends with uh, mm, specific recommendations for the internet community. Uh, unfortunately, due to the uh, pandemic regulations uh, and uh, the problems uh, concerned with it, uh, not all of the members of our research team were able to uh, join us uh, today in Katowice. Some of them are uh, with us uh, online and uh, we will try to uh, present uh, some of the uh, recommendations. Uh, but at the end, uh, I would like to encourage you to uh, read the book and to join uh, the discussion that I think uh, is already uh, running. Uh, the first uh, area that was uh, explored by our research team uh, was uh, uh, Internet, new technologies and the sustainable development. Uh, uh, and I'm pretty sure that this is a very important area that cannot be ignored when we are thinking about the future of law and technology. Uh, we have online with us uh, Professor uh, Wojciech Filipkowski, uh, and he is here uh, because uh, we have also considered uh, the issues of criminal liability in the context of uh, functioning of uh, smart cities. Uh, so, Professor, uh, could you please explain uh, to all the uh, summit participants why uh, the future is also concerned with uh, the necessary changes to the criminal law. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't uh, be, I wouldn't be able to, to participate uh, in person uh, in Katowice, 
but I hope you can hear me. Uh, together with uh, Rafał Rejmaniak, we look at the dark side of the um, development of new technologies in, in connection with the smart city concepts. And I think that uh, there are, there, there's a need for certain regulations uh, concerning um, the application of new technologies, especially AI, artificial intelligence, uh, because uh, um, there, this is very difficult from, uh, from criminal law point of view. And I'm talking only about the criminal liability of human beings, not the robots or the androids or artificial intelli intelligence, because I think that's uh, far in front of us. This, this is the future maybe, but uh, we stick with the criminal liability of human beings. So I think that uh, people, we, we are going to use it. People will operate um, uh, those technologies, uh, the equipment which, is, uh, which has been embedded with, uh, with, the, with the new technologies. So it's very important to clearly identify all the obligations and duties of human beings operating those uh, technologies in the concept of uh, smart city, uh, because, because of the criminal law principles, we have to know uh, who's responsible for what and uh, what are the penalties for this kind of uh, activities. We, we think this is, these are unlawful. And I think uh, we need um, two things. We need to ensure the real human supervision over fully, fully uh, autonomous systems. And I think we still need an interdisciplinary research involving experts from different various, uh, different fields of, of science, uh, IT, ethics, law, in development of commonly accepted principles regarding criminal, criminal liability or liability in general for potential damages. And I think that a uh, United Nations should make a force to harmonize legal standards uh, in, these are the, are the, uh, in those uh, areas on a global scale in order to avoid regulatory uh, asymmetries between countries or regions, because those asymmetries are going to be explored, explore, uh, and exploited by um, criminals in order to commit crimes. So that's my thoughts. That's why we need to, ex uh, to do research in case of um, uh, criminal law in, uh, in connection with new technologies and artificial intelligence in, in particular. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Filipkowski. Uh, it is really an important area. Before we will go any further, I would like to explain that there is a possibility uh, to uh, ask for headphones and uh, this is the way uh, to try to hear us a little bit better. Uh, um, we have also uh, devoted uh, our research uh, uh, to uh, more uh, broad subject of uh, eco smart cities. And uh, we have with us uh, Professor Magdalena uh, Mistria and Alexandra Harrington from um, New York. Uh, Magdalena is actually from Katowice. Uh, and they think that uh, eco smart cities uh, are a good method of promoting environmental sustainability and sustainable development in uh, an industrialized and in digitalized society. So uh, please explain in few words why is this so? Magda is here with us, so maybe Magda, you can start. And I hope that uh, uh, Alexandra will also join us in the discussion. Um, thank you so much. Um, hello, good uh, evening, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Advocate Magdalena Stria. I represent the University of Silesia uh, in Katowice. I am also a legal specialist of Sustainable Center for International Sustainable Development. Uh, law, uh, and I also cooperate with uh, Katowice Bar Council and uh, Police Supreme Bar Council. But before we uh, um, go to our recommendations uh, for, about the Eco Smart City, I would like to ask to connect with uh, Professor Alexandra Harrington because she's waiting uh, to let her in uh, using the link. So, uh, because we wrote yeah, chapter I guess together. This is, this is already happening, but maybe. You can start presenting the recommendation. Uh, well, I hope she will join us because no, okay, yes, I hope so. It okay. is an internet digital summit. Yes, of summit, course, to not waste the time. Yes, yes, uh, yes I will be honored. So uh, thank you also for invitation to the project and uh, for today. 
So the issues raised in our chapter are complex and uh, demonstrate how the EcoSmart City has the ability uh, to further the sustainable development uh, goals at the same time uh, that it um, advances the goals of the United Nations Internet Governance Forum and the needs of individual states uh, and municipalities. Uh, based on the chapter analysis and conclusions, uh, several critical policy recommendations can be made uh, to the United Nations uh, IGF uh, framework, as well as the international and national system more uh, broadly. So our first recommendation is adapt and encourage the implementation of guidelines and oversight mechanism to ensure that technology and associated infrastructures needed to support it are available and accessible to all. This is particularly important uh, in crafting the EcoSmart City and enabling the creation of EcoSmart um, cities even when there are significant, well, disparities. Uh, the, um, yeah, the overall encourage national, regional and international COVID-19 pandemic recovery efforts that include steps towards achieving the EcoSmart City as essential elements and which encourage uh, microfinance uh, that can be critical in generating sustainable incomes. Um, uh, the third of our recommendation is uh, encourage the entrenchment of the rule of law across all legal and regulatory system, especially those relating to internet and digital infrastructure and governance. Uh, this will be of particular importance in the post-pandemic world uh, where recovery is increasingly linked with access to information and technology. Uh, do we have connection with Professor uh, Alexandra Harrington or not? <laughs> no, I have received the information that she's still not connected. So. Okay. It seems like you do have to yes. make okay. all the job. So, uh, our fifth, uh, our fifth uh, recommendation is uh, incorporate the lessons uh, from the COVID-19 pandemic to design effectively public health system, provision of essential services during times of prolonged emergency, and design effectively public information laws and rules to combat misinformation. These are essential in all contexts but particularly so in the urban context where evidence had show, has shown that um, access to essential service has been difficult, especially in lower and middle income areas and where public health infrastructure is not designed for mass illness response. Well, we have uh, a lot of uh, more uh, recommendations, yes, but I think that is, I am one of the. Out this of is time. very uh, yes, and, um, interesting subject, but uh, everybody can read the book and join the yeah, discussion. Yeah, so that's why I uh, I probably will um, uh, give the floor to Professor uh, to yes. Professor uh, Zawuski, and uh, thank, thank you, you for much. your attention. I'm so sorry that we cannot connect with uh, Professor Alexander. I hope Harry, we will though. connect her today. Yeah, I yeah, hope so. It's thank you. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, one of the sections of our book is uh, also devoted uh, to the area of Internet, new technologies and privacy. And uh, mm, I was just informed that uh, we mm, have made a connection with uh, Sunny Milano today with Professor Maddalena Castellani, who uh, can present us the future of cloud computing. So please, uh, Maddalena, uh, uh, the floor is yours. Hello, good evening, and I'm very glad to be part of the Internet Governance Forum. And I would like to thank also on behalf of my co-authors, Cesare Triberti, that is not here, and Roberto Giacobazzi, um, that is here next to me, uh, Professor Darius Zostek and the coordinators as well as the Polish government for inviting us to participate. I do not intend to talk about the content of our paper in this brief speech, but I would like to leave a suggestion. Uh, with the University of Verona and in particular with my co-author Professor Giacobazzi who is present here, as I told you before, and uh, he is the Deputy Rector of the University of Verona, I'm lucky to be able to dedicate myself to teaching law at the Department of Computer Science uh, here in Verona. 
Even before the pandemic started, uh, we realized that it was imperative to integrate, uh, even at university level, IT knowledge with a knowledge of law. Now in Verona, uh, one hand software law is taught in computer science department, and on the other hand, fundamentals of computer science is taught in law school. This symbiosis has become indispensable today also because while the current pandemic has accelerated the strong link between IT and enterprises, it has also shown how current technology systems are increasing at risk of cyber attacks. In the article, we have dealt with the cloud computing system whose use increasingly in central to enterprise first analyzing the legal aspect within the larger set of outsourcing contracts, highlighting the strength and weakness, especially regarding the need to comply with the rules provided by GDPR. And, when, and then we have offered a, possi a possible technological advanced solution of morphic encryption to the problem of data protection, confidentiality and security of data stored in system based on the cloud. As said, the solution as a solution is not legal but technical. The scientific operation was therefore the following: the lawyer, I mean Professor Triberti, analyzes the state of scientific progress, the strengths and weakness and risks, and asks the IT consultant to study together strategy to overcome the problem. What I would like to leave as a suggestion to the United Nations and to my colleagues is to strengthen the link between the legal world and the world of information technology in order to allow the business and citizens to enjoy technological progress without having to pay as a ransom the loss of their freedom, which may be uh, that related to personal data for individuals or operational independence by companies that today often find themselves <laughs> in the grip of IT companies. I pass the floor to my co-author, Professor Roberto Giacobazzi, for a brief report on the possible technological solution. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Maddalena. Just to tell you that I have a couple of slides. I don't know if I can share the screen. Can I? Hello? Can I share the screen? I think this will not be possible. Uh... But uh, ah, okay, it's disabled. Yeah. Okay, so I can I can simply go ahead by talking. That's not a, that's not an issue. Okay, so um, the idea is that probably the future of uh, cloud security is homomorphic encryption. Homomorphic encryption looks like magic with respect to standard encryption, where we encrypt data, but uh, those data encrypted are completely unreadable from outside. So they are unreadable from the cloud. With homomorphic encryption, we encrypt data, we upload the data into the cloud, but then the cloud can make operations over encrypted data. So basically in a kind of blind way and return results that are correct with respect to our purposes. So this looks like magic, but it's, it's not magic, it's technology. The technology is developing now in these days, in these years, and it's already something that the technology can provide for simple operations like uh, operations for uh, manipulating numbers making computations and uh, transforming images. So this is a, the perfect situation where confidentiality and privacy is assured because all data are encrypted, but the cloud can manipulate the data, yet providing use, useful results. We believe that uh, everybody that is interested in privacy and security should have a look, a deep look at this technology because this technology will be a true paradigm shift with the next 10 years. That's it. Thank you very much. It was actually really nice uh, to spend a moment in the sun in Italy, especially that uh, today the weather is in Katowice is, is really awful. Uh, one of the uh, research areas uh, that uh, we were also uh, working on uh, was uh, the internet, new technologies and the justice system. Uh, well, uh, we have with us uh, from Mexico City, Professor Mauro Arturo Rivera, if I correctly pronounce your name. Uh, and uh, the issues uh, that the professor uh, with his uh, co-researcher 
uh, was uh, interested in uh, is the idea of constitutionalization of the digital justice. Uh, and so please tell us why is that uh, so important and what is the, actually the first uh, proposal of the, uh, Mexico in this area? One of the authors that uh, most likely has surprised us with his literature undoubtedly is Jose Saramago. And Saramago loves to put human characters through enormous tragedies, to great perils. In his novel Blindness, he puts humans into a situation in which everyone loses sight suddenly. He's not interested in these extraordinary situations, but into revealing what lies on the core of human nature. And this is exactly what happened with the pandemic. By the pandemic, it revealed what lies on the court of our justice system and what are the problematics that the justice system may face itself. When the pandemic started, particularly in Mexico, uh, the justice system completely stopped, like a clock. The caseload was growing, the courts stopped functioning. Uh, we suddenly faced the reality that uh, without the possibility to actually go to court, the justice system was in complete paralysis. Even though since 2013, Mexico had already operated with a system online uh, regarding some special kind of procedure called Amparo, the justice system simply collapsed. The Supreme Court was forced uh, with the Council of the Judiciary to expand this regulation, which has laid up on the foundations of Amparo, to other procedures to avoid a completely paralysis of the justice system. This led many legislators to realize that the justice system without the possibility of employing online procedures would lead to a very complicated situations. It was not only now uh, desirable as it was in 2013 when the situation was introduced, but it was rather necessary. Therefore, the Mexican case allowed uh, uh, Dr. Rodrigo Galan and myself to reflect about what would happen when different countries would realize this and started considering whether or not to amend their constitutions to state a uh, constitutional right to digital justice. Mexico last year presented an initiative of an amendment, an amendment proposal to the Mexican constitution to state the right to digital justice, to characterize uh, justice as digital. It was uh, passed on, on one of the chambers and it's a waiting discussion on the second chamber. However, we realize, and that's what uh, Dr. Rodrigo Galan and myself tried to put forward, that such a discussion is not a discussion merely on normative provisions. That is very easy to be seductive upon the normative illusion that amendments of law will change uh, mechanism, and it is not so. Therefore, what we realize is that uh, the true transition to digital justice will very little be based on constitutional provisions, but rather on two different factors. The first of all, an intensive technological intervention to allow the different actors to know these online procedures, and in second case, into avoiding a rather a transposition, a simple transition of existing procedures to an online sphere, but rather creating new procedures that are totally designed to be held online, to be held remotely. That is, not try to force the existing provisions, but rather to create new ones that will be allowed into these realities. We particularly face these subjects because at the, the time of writing uh, the study, I was a senior law clerk at the Mexican Supreme Court and Dr. Rodrigo Galan was a law clerk at the Electoral Court of Mexico City. Therefore, we were privileged, so to speak, to experience in first hand exactly these problematics. And we try to lay upon uh, this discussion that this is not anymore a desirable discussion, but a necessary one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the problem of digital justice is uh, really something that we will uh, for sure uh, work uh, uh, with it in the nearest future and maybe start another research group because this is so interesting and now we can come back to uh, the idea of a uh, eco smart uh, cities and actually eco smart cities i think they also need uh, digital justice uh, because we have with us uh, professor alexandra harrington so alexandra can you uh, please briefly uh, add uh, something to the recommendations uh, that magdalena has already presented of course, and thank you so much. I apologize for being unable to join at the last minute. Um, and I really do hope that we can all get together in the future and see each other in the future. Um, Magdalena did such a wonderful job of summarizing everything that I really only wanted to, um, to highlight several kind of overall themes from our, um, our presentation. 
in our chapter. And the first uh, is the idea that rule of law, connections with technology and infrastructure in cities, especially in smart cities is critical uh, right now, is critical to, uh, to how we build and respond from the pandemic as well as how we respond to climate change and other pressing issues. Additionally, creating and implementing guidelines and oversight mechanisms and governance systems generally for technological infrastructures, including the delivery of healthcare and digital infrastructure and public health and welfare systems is critical. And we've seen this during the pandemic, but this is really only the tip of this, the iceberg in Echo Smart Cities. And finally, ensuring that equity and equality in access to technological and digital infrastructures is available and is easily accessible across all levels of income and all levels of society living in cities and in urban areas will be critical. And so we have identified these as the three main themes that run throughout our recommendations. As Magdalena mentioned, we have about 13 recommendations overall to the UN and to various governments, um, both those that are uh, in developed states and those that are in developing states. Uh, but it is a very exciting time to study law and the intersection of law and the rule of law in particular and governance with the idea of the Echo Smart City and justice uh, per se. So thank Thank you all very much, and um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your time. Thank you very much. Uh, as I said, this is a very important issue, and it cannot be ignored when we are thinking about the future of the law and technology. Uh, some of us uh, cannot uh, also imagine uh, the life of a lawyer without uh, technologies, and uh, a part of the research that uh, we have done uh, enters uh, the area of uh, lawyers' offices, uh, but unfortunately, we don't have uh, uh, a time to present uh, all of the areas of our research. Uh, but uh, I would like to again encourage you to to find the book and uh, read it and join the discussion about the future, uh, also the future of lawyers, not only the future of the law. And uh, as you can imagine, and as already Professor uh, Rivera has explained, we have also reflected on the future of the judiciary. Uh, of course, we see uh, some new opportunities, especially in relations to artificial intelligence, which may be able to replace human beings in courts, perhaps as judges in the nearest future, who knows? Uh, but we also see significant threats uh, to the administration of justice and the judiciary. I hope uh, that uh, Professor Bernhard from Leipzig uh, is uh, already with us. Uh, 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 Professor Bernhard uh, has explored uh, uh, the area of the judiciary and has uh, very interesting observations and recommendations of what should be done in the judiciary of the future so if you are with us please uh, explain us why it is so important to think about the future of judiciary in the area of new technologies so i guess we are expecting some technological problems but it's normal finally we are um, at the digital summit uh, and we are talking about new technologies and sometimes the new technologies uh, do not help uh, in this area uh, but uh, mm, as uh, i have already explained we think that uh, it is possible in the nearest future that uh, artificial intelligence uh, would replace a human being in courts uh, it is not uh, that uh, hard to imagine, uh, but first we really do need to think about the uh, constitutional standards and uh, human rights protection standards. Uh, and after uh, the discussion on those two uh, vital issues is done, uh, then we can uh, start selecting cases that uh, can be uh, solved by uh, a computer. Uh, I think uh, in Poland, uh, as some of you uh, already know, uh, we have uh, something that uh, can be easily replaced uh, by artificial intelligence and 
uh, the something uh, I mean it's a e-court uh, where uh, um, judges uh, has about uh, four minutes uh, to make uh, uh, according to statistics uh, to make a, a decision in a specific case so I think four minutes is uh, something that is not uh, really um, uh, well uh, thought uh, around the uh, case and it's probably possible that this activity of a human being can be replaced by a judge and then uh, some interesting system of appeal uh, can uh, be uh, uh, um, executed. Um, I have no idea if we, we uh, uh, are connected with Professor Bernhardt, but I will ask again uh, if uh, he is with us. Professor Bernhardt, can you hear us? Okay, it doesn't look like so. So uh, we have only three minutes left. Uh, so uh, I guess uh, this is a, a gift uh, from a Santa Claus uh, to all of uh, the participants of this digital summit. Uh, I didn't uh, expect that we will um, finish before the deadline and somehow uh, it is possible. So thank you very much. It was really a pleasure to uh, see that uh, actually somebody else is interested in this uh, subject, uh, not only the research team. Uh, basically, it was only a selection of uh, the issues we wanted to present. Uh, uh, and we are hoping that you can actually, and you will actually read the book and join the discussion of the future of the law of the internet and new technology. Uh, everything seems uh, to indicate that the uh, symbiosis of these uh, two elements, law and technology, is necessary for our uh, further functioning. So, counting on this discussion, I would like to say goodbye and invite you uh, to participate in the future events that we intend to organize. Uh, I hope also that we will be uh, soon be able to meet in a post-pandemic world and discuss the issues that concern us. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to present these issues. Goodbye.